Welcome. In these two demonstrations, we're going to take a look at how Astra Airlines is helping make sure that their employees are aware of carbon emissions for all their flights in real time inside Lightning Experience. The second demonstration is going to include quote generation processing en masse using event driven handlers. So let's take a look at Astra Airlines. Astra Airlines has chosen to manage all of its flights and, in fact, bookings inside Salesforce. But what they want to do is make sure that when they're looking at flight record, they also have access to the carbon emissions for those flights. Now, they're also busy elsewhere updating their agent force agent to be able to access this information on demand as well. But right here, we want to see that information on this record for the employees so they don't have to go elsewhere and break their flow of work. So... Let's take a look at the Heroku code that's calculating those carbon emissions and how we're going to enhance this display with Flow. So the Heroku code has been already deployed and we can see it's already using the AppLink add-on. And the, one of the values of the AppLink add-on is this particular Java code is using Sockel. It's using Salesforce's query language to retrieve information about the flights and also retrieve information about the bookings so it can do those complex calculations and return the result in real time back to Salesforce. So we've gone ahead and run the import command, which is the special source of AppLink. This allows this code, this Heroku application, to spring into life inside Salesforce, which allows us to do wonderful things with Flow, Apex, and Agent Force. So today we're going to take a look at how we can do this with Flow. So what happened after the import command if we navigate to the Heroku uh, menu system in the setup menu for Salesforce, we can see this lovely about page that talks to about all about what Heroku can do. Uh, but we also have the apps page. And this is the exciting bit. After we ran that import command, this is how our Heroku application is now surfaced inside the Salesforce experience. So we can now click into this and see what are the operations that have been exposed. Now, sure enough, we do have our calculate carbon footprint operation. It's the one I just showed you. We have one or two others that are also part of other demonstrations. So let's go ahead now and revisit that uh, flight page, that detail page, and see if we can add a flow to that to expose those carbon emissions directly on this page for this given flight. So we're going to go and edit the, uh, the page here using uh, the App Builder. And uh, we're going to use the flow action and drag that just at the top of the page here. So I've gone ahead and already uh, created a flow, which we'll take a look at, look at in the moment. And that's going to display the carbon emissions. And one of the great features of this is we can pass the record ID directly into the flow so it already knows what record we're looking at. I'm going to hit save. And now let's take a look at the page and see, uh, see what information, extra information we've got. So, yep, there we have it, the calculated carbon footprint. So as quick as that, it immediately went off, used that action and called back to Heroku to display this information. So let's take a look at exactly what's going on with that flow. So here's that flow. As you can imagine, it's got a carbon footprint display screen, which is essentially the screen that was displaying the information that we just saw. But the key bit here is it's calling an action. And this is called the calculate carbon footprint action. And just like many other actions available to flow, I was easily able to add this into my flow and make it callable. So uh, let's have a quick look at what other actions might exist. Remember, there was several other operations that we saw. So if I go and have a look at Calc, we can see the Calculate Carbon Footprint, Calculate Finance Agreement, and Shipping Options. So those are just some of the operations that got imported when I did the import command. You can really import as many applications or as operations as you need to perform your flow activities. Fantastic. So that's how I built a flow that resulted in the carbon emissions being displayed on this lightning detail page super easy really nice for admins and point and click flow developers are really going to love this feature and capability apex developers will also love this as well because what we've also done here is applink generates nice friendly looking code for apex developers to call that service so they don't need to worry about authentication or json we've generated all these nice helper classes that really relate to the operations that have been imported so they can get with minimal amount of apex code if they want to to augment existing apex code so fantastic use of applink to enhance flow and apex as easy as importing your application into Salesforce. So let's take a look at our second demo. So our second demo revolves around that price calculation. 
And it's true that we have a price calculation feature within Salesforce, but some customers and enterprise businesses, their calculations are so regional specific, lots of mapping, rules and defaulting, the computational power and complexity just exceeds what our products can do. So that's where they go to Peroku to host that logic. Um, so what can we do to actually bring that logic directly into Salesforce? So our requirement here is to be able to, when an opportunity changes, generate uh, those new quotes by invoking that logic. So let's take a look, first of all, at the logic. So the logic, as you've just seen in the previous demo, is using lots of Sockel queries to calculate the pricing information. But there's something different about this one. It's using a worker dyno because background processes can take a lot longer to process and Heroku is great at scaling both vertically and horizontally. So we're using a web worker to get the original request in. And in this case, it will be an event coming in from change data capture whenever the records change. And we're processing it using a Heroku worker. And we've also got our Heroku events add-on installed. We've also got our Heroku app link or integration add-on installed. Of course, Redis is here uh, providing a mechanism for handling all of the messages between the web and the worker. So what's going to happen next is it's going to read the opportunities and generate all of the quote information. But it's also finally, at this last step, going to send a notification back to Salesforce, which is going to run a flow. So we get a nice visual confirmation that the work's finished. So let's take a look at what that looks like with this display. So the way that I've set this up is we're going to edit around 50 items all at once. And this is kind of just simulating maybe towards the end of a quarter, there's a lot of requests to generate a proposed quote. And on the right hand side, you can see our Heroku application is trailing the logs. So we get an idea of what's going on inside Heroku as well. So I'm going to hit save, and then what you'll see is all of those records change and update in Salesforce, and then up, then the log records will update. And finally, if you keep your eye on the notifications bell here, we get that notification from the Java code that all is well. And that's right, it's directly integrated into the Salesforce notification system, which is also visible if you're running on Salesforce mobile as a native mobile notification. So let's hit save. Okay, so now we can see on the right hand side all the records that have been processed, including all of the opportunity IDs and confirmation that 50 new quotes were inserted. And if we go to our bell icon, we can see that quotes generated is 50. So you can see it's a very quick demo in where we can use change data capture events to invoke Heroku worker logic to do heavy processing and computational operations and feed that data back into Salesforce's quotes. Here's a little brief look at one of those quotes. It's obviously linked with an opportunity, and these are the quote line items that were generated by the Java code. So finally, let's recap. The first thing that happened in step one is we got some records being changed in Salesforce. That fired a change data capture event, which the eventing add-on picked up. It duly sent that over to our web dyno, which handled that by sending it off to Redis as a request. Redis was then being listened to by our worker dynos, which invoked the processing logic that started updating all of the quotes and creating the quotes in Salesforce. And then finally, we used our eventing add-on one more time to send an event that confirmed the completion of the processing that resulted in a small flow being run that updated our notification icon. What other things can you do with eventing? Well, as we've mentioned a few times in various other demos, you can actually connect Heroku integration and eventing with multiple orgs. And it's very, very common for Salesforce customers to have lots of different orgs, maybe for different sales, sales environments geographically, and maybe they have a headquarters org. Using these technologies, customers with multiple orgs can use Heroku to bring together insights and operations and automation that spans multiple orgs. They can also use it with data cloud as well. So any code that's generating insights, perhaps from a website they've built with Heroku, can stream that information over into data cloud using Heroku eventing. And finally, Heroku eventing can also invoke third-party webhooks. It doesn't just have to be a webhook that we've implemented as developers in Heroku and deployed to Heroku. It could be a Google app webhook or if this, then that webhook or even a GitHub webhook. So that concludes our two demos. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you for your time.